I just started heating up, you know. <laughs> Where's where my bag? Uh, because I did this, now I have to do this, you know. And then this also. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for coming and thank you for this introduction. Now we have to look for this person that he was introducing. <laughs> yeah, can we see it? I don't see it on my side. <laughs> okay, so anyway, it's uh, really lovely to meet up. For me, the most important thing is not to deliver a speech, just to meet up, to socialize. We're enjoying. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, that's quite an uh, important thing, and also because we are chatting, we are having discussions, so do not be ashamed to stop me if you do not understand something. Because especially uh, 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 English is not my native language, so definitely there will be some certain, you can say, um, uh, places which you misunderstand. So do not be afraid of stopping and questioning me, and I do welcome it actually. So that is um, one thing. And the second thing, uh, you know, um, as uh, uh, Brother Wakar mentioned, uh, it is quite sensitive issue, unfortunately. Even though if Imam Ali is one of the Sahaba, but speaking about Ali became sign of misguidance for us as Ahl Sunnah. Okay? So I think even our Shia brothers, they have something similar. For them, speaking about Abu Bakr, for them, is misguidance. Okay? Um, I would say, in the life of Rasulullah wasalam, these are two personalities which are undetachable. Because uh, what was the most dangerous event in the life of Rasulullah Who can recall it? For me, Hijrah is the most uh, dangerous event. Yeah? So shall I do that opera? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's that? Um, uh, of course, battle, but there was, all, uh, there was a promise in the battle before Rasulullah was engaged into the battle. Promise was already there that there will be victory. Means there was not any danger for the Prophet. ﷺ. But for the migration, was there any promise from God? No. So he was going blindly. So, but for anything else, there was promise of victory. Okay, so even when they were coming, to Mecca, naked handed, maybe dangerous, but isn't it that Allah promised? With no fear. You will not. So it means there was not any danger except the migration. That was the most dangerous. Okay? So even Rasulullah had to hide himself in the cave. Do you remember? When them two are in the cave. So he was hiding himself. When Prophet said to his companion, do not be scared that God is with us. God is with us. Now my question. <clears throat> Who, what is the name that is the more relevant in the migration of Rasulullah Abu Bakr and why Ali? Because Rasulullah left him behind. To do what? To take care of the amanat. Yes. To return it back to its owners. It is the hypocritical behavior of Quraysh. Publicly insulting and slandering him, but deep down in their heart they know that he is the most reliable person, so they left their most expensive things. So he would take care of all of these things. And Rasulullah agreed with them, with the Quraysh, that I'm migrating, so anyone has anything with me, come and collect it. But some of them were unable to come on time. So Rasulullah left Ali ibn Abi Talib to return it back. I don't know if you have heard about this story. When Rasulullah decided to migrate, several Sahaba offered to go to be in his company. Okay, give me the most famous two figures, two names. One of them was Umar. But what Rasulullah said, he said, you just take care of yourself, you just go by yourself. And we know who is Umar, that strong, brave guy. And even when he was migrating, he performed tawaf, everyone was hiding and migrating, but he came and he said, if any of you 
wants to leave his wife widowed and his kids orphans, so then go and meet me behind this mountain. So brave man, young man, okay, hot blooded, okay. So Jawani ke joshe hota hai. So but he came and then he said, if you want your face to be smashed, meet me behind the mountain. So the same young man offered to Rasulullah saying, Ya Rasul, I will be in your company. You may need me. So Rasulullah said, you just take care of yourself and then you just migrate by yourself. Okay. In this critical situation, he says no to brave and strong person. And the second person came after him. It was Hamza. And we know who Hamza is. If you don't know who Hamza is, then you don't know what Islam is. Hamza is that person in Badr. Badr belongs to Hamza. Okay, yes. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I will take care of you. So Rasulullah said, you just go by yourself. And we do have narrations in which Rasulullah sent some of the Ahlul Bayt with Hamza because Hamza is his uncle. But the, the rest, the vast, maj the, the, the vast majority of Ahlul Bayt, they were with Ali. Uh, wife of Rasulullah and the descendants and adopters, all of them, it was the duty of Ali to take care. Now tell me, what was the age of Ali when he migrated? 71. So, inshallah, we'll talk about it. Okay, just in a bit. He was a young man. Okay? So, Rasulullah chooses two personalities in the most critical situation and now we have people who disown either this or disown other that do you agree with me to say that it is so deep stupidity you disown the person who was chosen by Rasulullah in the most dangerous in the most critical situation okay so we have on our end, we have some foolish people say, Oh, Ali, don't speak about him because you are Shia. And we have on the other end, some foolish guys, don't speak about Abu Bakr because he was hypocrite. Rasulullah chooses both of them. And then you come to teach me who are these people. Okay, so, but that's not the case. The case is, Rasulullah choosing them proves that uh, we have quite important things to learn from these personalities. Okay, and also uh, how it can be that Rasulullah chooses this young man. Um, didn't he have someone more wiser, someone more mature? I say no. There was maybe more mature, yes, but more wiser, no. We'll talk about it. Um, the story starts, the story of wisdom and everything else starts from uh, when, um, before Rasulullah started receiving the revelation, uh, Rasulullah was merchant and Abbas was merchant. But what about Abu Talib? He was merchant, but he had a lot of children. And more than that, he used to take care of the Hujjaj because he was spiritual head of Quraysh. Okay, so can you give me the name of spiritual head in our time? But spiritual head is not only advices, but the person who will pay off your debts, take care of widows, Orphans, do I have anyone in our time? Just give me one name. Sorry? Yes, yeah, so maybe Sylvester Stallone or something. <laughs> no, because he goes hostages, he frees hostages and takes care of widows, doesn't he? Does he give them money also? Does he? Yeah? No? He's too greedy because he's brunette. Yeah? We need to be blonde to be generous. Anyway, you know, so um, what was the problem? The problem was, so Abu Talib had a lot of people to look after. Okay? So that's why um, in, our history, you know, in our history books, we find Abu Talib with the level of poverty. He was not poor, but he had many people to look after. Okay? Or otherwise, he was also a successful merchant. Okay, so entire family household of Rasulullah they were merchants. Except Rasulullah he did both trading as well as he was shepherd also. Okay, so anyway, 
so then Rasulullah alayhi salam said to um, Abu Talib, he said, okay, uh, I'm sorry, to, Jaf, um, to Abbas. So he said, so because Abu Talib has big family and he has a lot of other people whom he's maintaining, so it is quite difficult. So let's give him some ease. So Rasulullah said, let's take, let's take care of his children. I will take Ali and you take Jafar. Okay, so uh, Ali radiallahu he was the adopted son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So that is the, wis the source of wisdom. Okay, so he was not yet mature, Imam Ali. And this incident happened long before Rasulullah received the revelation. Means it is the tarbiyah of Rasulullah alayhi salam. Okay, we have, unfortunately, we do have some certain um, and narrations in which it says that one of the earliest people to accept Islam it was Ali who disowned worshipping Lat and Uzza when Rasulullah offered. Ali never worshipped Lat and Uzza. It is some of the Bani Umayya people they want to insult Rasulullah because they are not brave enough to insult the Prophet directly. So let's insult his product. And his first and the most important product is Ali. Okay? So, no courage to insult him, so insult his product. Okay? For example, this is something that you made. Okay? So, if I'm not brave enough to insult you, I'll say, I just look stupid, you know? Means you are stupid. Understand? Okay? So, that was the case. So, Ali never worshipped Lat and Uzza. So, that's why we normally call him Ali Karramallahu Wajha. Okay? Because he was glorified from the childhood. Because he was under the guidance of Rasulullah So anyway, further, so that was the uh, source of the wisdom. Okay, so for example, in the latest generation, unfortunately, they introduced this, you can say, innovated uh, topic in our aqidah. Who is better? Is it Abu Bakr and Ali? If you are asking me who is better in front of God, so I don't know, I'm not God. You will ask him then. But if you are asking me, if you're asking me in terms of wisdom, so no one can beat him. Because it is taken from whom? From, Ras from the childhood. From Rasulullah, from the childhood. Okay, so that's why Rasulullah appoints him as the source of knowledge after him, isn't it? Okay, I am the city of knowledge and knowledge is gained through the gate who is Ali. So in terms of knowledge and wisdom, no one can beat him. Okay, so even in the time of uh, Umar radiallahu in, in his khilaf, if you remember, in so many occasions, fuqaha of sahaba, they conclude about some certain issue, but then Imam Ali opposes them. And then Umar comments. It's very well-known comment. What is the comment? Yes, if they would not be Ali, so then I would be destroyed. Okay, so it is quite, so means in terms of knowledge, no one can beat Ali. Okay, so it is out of equation. Out of, but if you compare in terms of size of muscle or length, maybe someone else can beat among Sahaba. But in terms of wisdom, no. But in, fr in front of God, who is better? Well, God will decide it in your Mulqiyam. We don't know. So I think this issue should not be part of Aqidah because it's based on ambiguity. But the issue of Aqidah is based on certainty. Is God blind? No. That is a matter of certainty. But who is better in front of God? Is it Abu Bakr or Ali? Or maybe even Mas'ud? Who knows? We don't know. Allah will tell us Yawmul Qiyamah. In Yawmul Qiyamah. Okay? So, so anyway, but it does not mean that uh, we should uh, disown one in order to praise the other. Okay? So anyway. So that's quite an important thing. So that's the... Uh, another thing, and also, I want to just stop very briefly in the age of Imam Ali, when he accepted Islam. Because unfortunately now we have this notion, which is coming from specific scholars in the past. I'm not going to mention the names because I don't want the people to be offended. So they say that um, uh, he was immature when he accepted Islam, and the Iman of immature kid is not valid. Okay, so uh, what was the age of Imam Ali when 
Rasulullah has received the message. Anas ibn Malik says that revelation came on Monday and uh, on Tuesday Imam Ali supported, accepted that and supported that. So it's only one day, one day. Okay, so what was the age of Imam Ali? Who remembers? Who knows? How old was Imam Seven or nine? Okay. Mm. Ten or, yeah. <clears throat> so if you remember, we have this uh, story. It says that when Sayyidah Fatima married Imam Ali, so Sayyidah Fatima was 16, in the most popular opinion. And they say that um, Imam Ali was 20. Okay. So means, uh, and that uh, marriage took place after the migration. After one year after the migration. Okay, so now um, calculation is going to be quite complicated because we don't know for, for sure how many years Rasulullah spent in Mecca and how many years in Medina. Because Ibn Abbas says Rasulullah spent 15 years in Mecca. But the most popular opinion says it is 11 years, isn't it? 11 years, that's the most popular. Okay, so anyway, we have many opinions. It starts from 7, 8, 9, 10, but in my own understanding, most reliable is the opinion of Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri because he was part of family household of Rasulullah because he is the, uh, um, uh, you can say, adopted son also of Umm Salama. Okay, so he says uh, Ali was either 15 or 16. So when in that story, so next day Imam Ali accepting Islam, so he was either 15 or 16. Okay, and also, there was a conversation between Imam Ali and Rasulullah when he offered what the revelation was. If you just listen to the conversation, you understand that the person on the other end is quite a mature person. Okay? So I, I'm willing to... What are you doing, Rasulullah? You understand? As well as um, the next day when they were praying together, Abu Talib comes. Obviously, that, there are some fabrications in it. They want to insult by this lie by these lies, they want to insult Abu Talib. Okay, so what is the lie? So the lie says, yeah, so um, once Abu Talib came and then he found Rasulullah and Ali praying. Okay, so then he asked, what are you doing? So then Rasulullah expressed, e explained what he's doing. So then Abu Talib said, ah, you know, actually uh, what you are doing is right, but I'm really sorry to mention it. I don't want my back passage to be higher than me. So that's why I'm not accepting your religion. It was just to, it's fabricated to insult Abu Talib. He's not this stupid guy, you know. He's very noble. First of all, he wouldn't mention this word. You understand? And he wouldn't deny the truth only because of this. You understand? So, but it more looks like um, Umawi statement. You can expect this from Bani Umayyah. They say this type of language. It is their language. It's their terminologies. And actually they did say that to Rasulullah I don't want this to be higher than my head. Understand? So it is stupid uh, comment. So anyway, so but if you go, go to the authentic narrations in which Rasulullah and Ali have conversation straight after the revelation, you understand that Ali was quite mature. The way he speaks to Rasulullah Okay? Because can you imagine Rasulullah is 40 years old mature person, okay, and then he calls seven years old kid, saying, yeah, this is my message, will you accept? You understand? Immature kid. He's your son. You do not offer it like that. How do you speak to your child? You understand? So from here, we, and, but for fact, Rasulullah did offer his message to Imam Ali. So definitely, Imam Ali was quite mature person. Okay, and also um, uh, they say that uh, uh, the revelation came in the time in which Rasulullah used to look, you know, to do his duty as a shepherd with Imam Ali. So it's not with five or seven years old kid, but they're doing it together. You understand? So it means it is quite a mature person. So there is no any doubt that when Imam Ali uh, accepted the message, okay, so it is the next very day after the revelation, 
So definitely he was between 15 to 16. That is the statement of Hassan al-Basri. We do have other opinions in which it says 18 years old. Okay, but for that, we need some extra proofs. I'm not really sure if that is right. But anyway, in my own understanding, it is 15 or 16. Okay, but the other opinions could be, again, just to, just, just to make that statement, that uh, belief of immature kid is not accepted. Just to make that statement. Okay, so that is about this one. Then, look, next story will give you the exact age, okay, or something. You can guess the age of Imam Ali. So what happened next? So after revelation coming, Allah has ordered, saying, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Go and warn your family members. Who knows what happened next? Okay, anything else? We have two stories. One story was made up to hide the real story. Okay, so what, what happened? So they say, yeah, when this Anzir Ashiratik al Akrabin was revealed, so Rasulullah went and then he was shouting, okay, on the hill, calling the people. Okay, oh, Bani Banu Abdul Dar, Banu Muttalib, all of you come here. Okay, and when they came, he said, if I would warn you from this army, okay, or soldiers coming and they're willing to kill you, would you trust my word? So they said yes. So then I'm warning you about, now tell me one thing. Obviously, I'm not being critical about this, now. tell me one thing. Um, we all know what is the level of wisdom of Rasulullah salam. So if he would be ordered to warn the people, how he would do it? He would do it in the best ever way. So calling the people on top of the hill, do you think it will let the message through? It's not likely. It's not the best way. But we have another story in which when this revelation came down, Rasulullah invited his family members to the food. In total, there were either 40 or a bit lesser than 40. It is his relatives. Okay? And then Rasulullah offered them a food. So when food was offered, Abu Lahab, he was quite a smart guy. He was understanding what is happening because he had understanding of what was revealed. And he knew that Rasulullah is just a great orator and he can convince everyone. So now after having food, normally, uh, when stomach is open, heart is also open, isn't it? So if you want to let your message through, you just can test it by yourself. One is just go to him and say it to him directly. And the second is invite him for food and have conversation over the food. Which one is better? Second one, because that will open up good, you can say warm, you can say feeling towards each other. So after that, Abu Lahab understood that there is something is going to happen now. He said, we have been affected as if it would be black magic. Rasulullah said he just ruined everything. Then Rasulullah said, just forget about it now. He invited them next time, few times after that. Each time Abu Lahab is destroying. Because you need some certain mood, isn't it? Some certain ethos. Can you imagine that um, now I will just... Uh, um, uh, after having food, okay, so I will say, okay, now, even if there would be lie, who would accept? Do you think that it is wise for you to deliver your speech then? Because I already created that negative thing, isn't it? Even if there would be some lie, everyone would accept. So now people will say, ah, yeah, actually, yes. So then people will be negatively prepared. So, Rasulullah, after the statement of Abu Jahl, Rasulullah said, forget about it today. And then he invited them again and again. And once Abu Lahab didn't say anything, so then Rasulullah started explaining. So he started commenting on the current issues of that time, what they were, ha what they were having, okay, and what are the solutions. He made them, he forced them by his comments, he forced them to 
ask him, so what is the way out? So then Rasulullah said, so he said, I started receiving message from God, but I cannot do it by myself. I need your help. So who is willing to help me? And promise from God that that person will replace me after my death. This is the real story of Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, so it was only Imam Ali okay, who said, Ya Rasulullah, it will be me. Okay, unfortunately. But now question, it's just my genuine question to you guys. So do you think that um, no one else uh, took the duty of supporting Rasulullah Because it is the family of noble people. Do you think that they will just disown the relative? It does not make sense, isn't it? So we can understand this Abu Lahab, story of Abu Lahab, because there was some type of envy uh, towards us and towards the father of us. So there was envy. So we can, so between the relatives, it happens. Your cousins, isn't it your uncle, envious towards you? It happens. So I can understand Abu Lahab. So let's forget about Abu Lahab. Okay? But what about the rest? Because there were about 40 male, mature, strong members of Banu Hashim. And only Imam Ali says, it is me, Ya Rasulullah. So this story also proves for another time that uh, Imam Ali was not a seven years old kid. He was quite mature and very brave and very ready for this. Okay? But anyway, so it is my question. So what do you think? Is it possible that so entire family says no to Rasulullah? So it is a bit strange, isn't it? So I would say, I wish if, we would, if I would have a bit more chance to look into all of these stories. Maybe we, we may find, maybe we would find something. But, but from what we know, it's only Imam Ali said yes. Uh, Abbas was a bit scared. Okay. Um, so from the, the, you can say context, you can understand that there was some certain type of financial problems. So he was afraid that his... Uh, wealth will not be sufficient. So for some reason, he thought that it is to do with the money. Okay, supporting means with the money. But obviously, there will be some certain element of money. So Abu Bakr came and he supported, isn't it? So, but uh, Abbas, he remained. He straight away, he accepted what Rasulullah said. But he remained with his hidden iman. Okay, do you remember when he was captured in uh, Badr? Okay, so Rasulullah said, do not touch him, but he will pay the uh, compensation. So uh, uh, Rasulullah left him as you can say to take care of what's happening in there and to inform him. So he was believer, but he didn't. So there was some certain type of fear, most likely financial. Okay, so that is about this one. But then, uh, unfortunately, we do not have any other uh, any other uh, information that any of the family of Rasulullah supported him. So it was only Imam Ali. Okay, but where was Hamza? Why he didn't support? He came later. He joined later afterward, even after the uh, migration to uh, Habasha during that time. Okay, a couple of maybe days before or after. Okay, so it is quite strange why everyone else was silent, including Hamza and uh, we had uh, uh, Harith. Okay, Harith uh, ibn Abi Talib. So uh, Harith ibn uh, uh, Harith ibn uh, Abdul Muttalib top personalities, okay, very, uh, uh, who joined afterward, okay, so where were they? Wh why would you not hear anything from them? And only Ali stands up, says, Ya Rasul, it is me, just trust me and I will do everything. So anyway, so that is another episode, quite important. So from here we understand the um, uh, reason for importance of this personality in Islam, okay? Uh, we need to give a bit more, you can say, um, uh, contemplation um, I do not believe that even our Shia brothers, they thought about it. Because uh, what is the religious mentality? Okay, so let's suppose that, uh, do you know, Rasulullah is using this miswak. You know the miswak? So everyone saw miswak. Now miswak became holy. That was not the idea. It is just religious mentality is diverting the thing. Okay, now they have this uh, holy, holy wooden stick with the perfume on it, if it's possible, 
So before using it, wipe on your eyes, tabarruk, barak, religious mentality. Okay? So, um, same thing happened with Imam Ali, with our Shia brothers. Oh, we love him, but what was the main importance of Imam Ali in our religion? Oh, he had to be political leader. There wasn't any polit polit political things in Islam. Okay? So, it's very important, it's very uh, easy to understand. Let's suppose that I'm a singer, so the succeeder of the singer will be singer. Replacement of the singer will be singer. Can, for example, replacement of the singer to be a biologist? So what are you? Yeah, so I'm the succeeder of Michael Jackson. Does not make sense. Was Rasulullah political personality? Was he politician? So his succeeder cannot be politician. You understand? So he said, the one who will support me now, he will replace me after my death. Ali said, I'm doing it, Ya Rasulullah. So it means it's not di uh, the issue of dispute. Okay, but, but then, uh, but in terms of being political leader, definitely there could be political leader, okay, but there could be someone who replaces what Rasulullah was doing. Because as Rasulullah came to Medina, there was political leader, but it did not conflict with what Prophet was doing. Same thing would happen after his death also. His succeeder would do what Rasulullah did, but Polit politicians would carry on doing what they're doing, isn't it? I'm yeah. talking about the message of social justice and the, the, the real message of Islam about humanity and safety. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but anyway, so, so now my question to you. So it, if it was the duty of Imam Ali, so what was that duty? So we agreed that it's not appointing pol uh, you know, uh, politicians, mass, and except, but it was not that. And Rasulullah by himself, he says, that I have chosen to be prophet, servant of God, and not prophet, president. So it totally excludes. But again, I'm coming back and saying, being prophet and king or president, that's very possible. Dawood So he was politician, political head, as well as prophet. So it's not conflicting. And also, Quran is very clear to deny the fact that Rasulullah was king or president by saying, Lest alayhim be musaytir. Okay, you're not in charge of them, but king is in charge of the citizens. If you do not obey the king, what is going to happen? He can punish you, in jail you. But if you do not obey the prophet, there could be punishment in the day of judgment. But in here, Allah clearly says, you have only the duty of passing on the message. Okay? You are not in charge of them. They, they do not have... So if they disobey you, okay, so then... Anyone who accepts what I am saying, so let him. And anyone who does not, so let him. So there is no any political, you can say, uh, power which is given to Rasulullah Okay, and even, for example, there were incidents in which um, uh, 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 oppressive people, tribes, they invaded in and destroyed some certain tribes, isn't it? Weak tribes. And then Rasulullah was ordered to defend them. Okay, and he ordered the Sahaba to get ready and to go and to defend those people. But what happened to those who disobeyed Rasulullah? What Prophet did to them? did nothing. Now, by the name of God, if you disobey the president or king or queen to go for war, what happens to you? Prophet is not politician. You understand? But he's engaged into the social and these type of events. But he does not have that position of <coughs> being politician. Understand? So that's quite easy to... But anyway, uh, I remember I wanted to hold... Uh, um, a joint um, uh, uh, panel discussion with some of the brothers, some of the movements, head of the movements in the UK, who call for political things, you know, khilafa, khilafa. Um, and it's supposed to be organized last year, but there were some certain issues and it didn't go through. And this was the actual topic. Okay, is Islam a political thing and do we need to set up our political movement with its leaders, with its prime ministers, ministers, etc., or not. Obviously, they say yes, and I say no. So, 
it's supposed, but maybe, inshallah, sometime this year or next year, we'll organize it, inshallah. So in there, maybe you can attend and we'll discuss about it in, um, in, in depth. So anyway, uh, 10 minutes. No, because I just started heating up, you know. <laughs> Where, where's my bag? Uh, because I did this, now I have to do this, you know. And then this also. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, because. How long before you finish? Uh, two days. <laughs> <laughs> because I've just started. It's just Ali. It's, it's just up. born. Just born. So it means we we'll have to. Oh, okay. Go up to the end. Okay, okay, that, that's fine. No, don't worry. Okay, so we'll do it. Okay, so anyway, anyway. Okay, so the summary. The summary of the story. Um, so, as Imam Ali made an agreement with Rasulullah to support him. So promise of Rasulullah is applicable on him. Okay, I'm not talking about khilafa, which is political. So people they have right to choose as a political leader any anyone they want. But I'm talking about much more dangerous issue. What Rasulullah was doing, it was the duty of Imam Ali. So in our time, we are fighting with our Shia brothers about that political thing. I'm really sorry, it is quite offensive word, but I have to mention it. It is intellectual masturbation. It does not give anything. Okay, yeah, so our Ali have to be a politician, you know, and then we say, no, it's Abu Bakr, you know. I don't really care anyone. Just give it to anyone you want, but I'm talking about much more important issue. Now, by the name of God, who was the last person to give birth to Abu Bakr? It was Ali, but why? There was not any disliking, or, but... He said because he was compelling, he was copying the Quran and he was busy with that. Look how smart this guy is, you know. He understood his duty in full dimension. So if he would think that I'm the politician, he would go and fight, you know. But he understood that he's not politician, but he is carrying another duty. Quran. So when Abu Bakr, when he came to, uh, so Ali said, give me your hand so I will give you bayah, political bayah. Okay, so then Abu Bakr said, why, oh, oh, Abu Hassan, you're a noble person, why it took so long before you came? So he said, yeah, because I was copying, I didn't finish copying, and I thought that after the death of Rasulullah, it may get lost. So I was scared for that, so I was spending day and night just copying, copying, copying. This guy understands his duty perfectly. We are listening, we do not know, and Shia, they don't know also. We are fighting over political things, okay? But Sahaba, they agreed about political and other things, you know? Okay, but anyway, so uh, we have a hadith, authentic hadith, uh, transmitted through several chains. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and few other Sahaba. So it was incident in which so it happened twice actually. Once, uh, so Rasulullah um, somehow um, um, the shoes of Rasulullah was somehow despaired. Okay, and obviously Imam Ali, so he was just stitching it. And uh, um, so then uh, they were just going. Okay, so then uh, Rasulullah made very strange comment. For us, it's very strange, but with Quran, it is very consistent. Okay, so then uh, Rasulullah said, okay, um, uh, where is Ali? Yeah, yeah, Rasulullah, he is just still with your shoes. So then, uh, actually, no, it was not the case. So Rasulullah said, um, they will fight him over interpretation of Quran as you fought me over revelation of Quran. This is a very clear message to explain what was the duty of this person called Ali. <coughs> they will fight him over interpretation of Quran as they fought me, as they were fighting with me over its revelation. Um, so that's one thing. And also, um, 
Do you remember, there is another very important incident. It's just when Rasulullah worked out that he's going to die this year uh, through the signs, etc. Okay. Uh, so then it was Rasulullah just one year. Okay, the year in which he died. Okay, just one year before. So he was coming back from Hajj. Okay, and there was this place, lake, big lake. Okay, and in there Rasulullah made very long and very painful. For me it is very painful khutbah. Okay, so he said, oh people be aware that I'm finding something that I never used to find before. Most likely I'm going to die and you are not going to meet me again. Means what is going next is the most important thing. Because when you inform someone that you are going to die and then you want to tell him something, so that is a very important thing, isn't it? Then Rasulullah said, وَإِنَّهُ أَنْبَأَنِي أَلَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ And the most knowledgeable and the most wisest informed me that you should take care of these two important things and God told me that they will never get detached from each other. Okay, so one is Kitabullah and the second is he specifically was talking about Ali and his descendants if they obey Ali so then yes or otherwise so the key point in here is Ali ibn Abi Talib okay so anyway uh, so in here we have so as you see Ali is related to Quran why are you so late oh Ali yeah because I was copying because I'm afraid for it to be lost okay and then before the death Quran and Ahl Bayt will not get detached now my question to you guys what other sciences okay or subjects or knowledge in Quran what do I have in there Do I have the story of a bead, how long it should be? And when you bow, how straight should be your back? Or when you make wudu, how many drops does it have to f fall? It's not there. Why is not there? Because the person who was responsible to give the, extract the honey from Quran is Ali. But those who squeezed him out and replaced him, they had their own knowledge. So what we're studying now, is not what is in Quran because the person who was responsible to do it was killed, was totally squeezed out of pedestal. Now we have something called scientific miracle of Quran. Yes, I believe in it. But who is presenting it? And look how weak they're presenting. Okay, for example, all of them, embryon and all of them, scientific miracles, now they are ruining. Do you know the Islamophobes now, oriented, they are totally ruining. They are to just smashing it. Because Quran was talking about totally different thing, you know. So, for example, let's suppose that um, a president or prime minister sends me to present the political, you can say, do you know the knowledge of conservative political movement. And Prime Minister appoints me to be the main person who teaches it. And then this guy comes and kills me and then he teaches what he has. So will he explain? And he never studied this conservative political move. So do you think he will explain what is in here? No. So Quran was talking about the movement of sun in its orbit, moon, stars. Okay, so different types of mountains. How many types of mountains do I have in the world? Different types of winds. Okay, how many types of them do I have? And which one is useful and which one is harmful? So there are days in which wind is destructive. Which days are these? It was the duty of Ali to explain. Did we listen to him? But we're listening to other imams. Who is the imam of tafsir? Give me the name. Yes, or even among Sahaba, who is the? But who supposed to be? It should be Ali. It should be Ali. So when the real presenter of Quran was smashed, others will come and they will dictate their own knowledge. And what is their knowledge? So do you know how many drops? And when you hold your 
bead, it should be full fist. And is it extra two fingers or is it only one finger? Yeah? So, but where is it in Quran? Tell me what is in Quran. Because I believe in God. And here is the word of God. I do not believe in you and your word. Teach me the real Islam. But that was the person who was responsible. Okay. And he was totally squeezed out. They have appointed many scholars. Uh, for example, Zuhri and many, many other scholars. But none of them is Ali or his students. Give me only one name of student of Ali. Muhammad al-Baqir, Zaid al-Shaheed, okay, Ali Sajjad, these are the students of Ali. Do we consider them as our Imams? Why not? It was their duty to explain what is in Quran because God promised that they will not get detached from Quran. Okay, but forget about all of that. Now we have real disagreement. Who was the president? I say Abu Bakr. Shia say, no, it was Ali. Who cares about this presidentship, you know? There was much more important duties. Okay. And also, there is another aspect. There is another aspect. Um, do we consider spiritual knowledge as part of Islam or not? In our time, no. But in the reality, it is. When Khidr was doing whatever he was doing, as excuse, what did he say? He said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I didn't do it by my choice, by myself. Okay, but I have been ordered by God. You are not prophet, how you was ordered. So it is another subject, another sign, another knowledge. And Ali was responsible to do it. And he was explaining, but people were defaming him, isn't it? So for example, in our time we have a lot of fake but yet genuine chains go back to Imam Ali what is that chain about about what Khidr used to do spiritual chains so Ali was passing it on but to small number of individuals only those people were listening to him because he was replaced by another names made up names you know of scholars okay they have seven fuqaha of Medina look when Zaid is in Medina, who else has a right to give fatwa? Seven fuqaha. Even if it's 70, Zaid is there. Shut up. No, no, no. Seven fuqaha. Do you know what? Seven fuqaha, it is just imitating of seven hukama. Because seven, number seven, it's taken from Greeks. Seven philosophers. Socrates and all of them, seven. So it is just to imitate, just to squeeze out the people of Quran. Zaid. Yes, we have seven on our side. Zaid is just nothing. Just throw him to Kufa, kill him there, behead him there. Okay, so that is... Anyway, so it is very brief, you can say, introduction to the topic. So I didn't give the lecture, but it is just, you can say, something to investigate further. Okay, obviously, the first Khalifa after Rasulullah, the political Khalifa, it was Abu Bakr Siddiq, and then... Umar and then Uthman and then Ali but Ali had different duties so it is the same as Hudhayfat ibn al-Yaman was he president? Hudhayfat ibn al-Yaman, Sahabi was he king or president? no, but he had specific duty from the Prophet his duty is Sahabu Sir he held the names of the hypocrites okay so, so we had some certain Sahaba who were performing some certain duties and Ali, he is the translator of Quran and he is the scholar of Quran and he is the succeed of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is something to further investigate.